IPAs. We have been pretty open on our channel here about not being the biggest IPA drinkers, but oh my, is this an interesting style of beer, my friend. One for the market share that it occupies in today's beer world. IPAs are <laughs> extremely, extremely popular, but also just for the style itself, being as hoppy as it is, being as strong and powerful as it is compared to some other mainstream macro beer brands. So what would you tell people who are wondering maybe what is an IPA? How would you define it for them? It's a wonderful question, my friend. And it's mm. actually a very interesting question very because interesting. it has this long history behind it like you very well said in one of our most recent uh, inside the brackets about like stouts and why they're popular in ireland and if you haven't checked it out make sure you go check it because that's a fantastic episode i love um, it sell it <laughs> porters were becoming very uh, popular in england and they got like consequently exported in ireland right like but at a certain point in England, as a, I wouldn't say as a reaction, but as an evolution of that style, a new style emerged from uh, porters, which were obviously very well known, dark, a little bit more like strong in the flavors, deep in the flavors. A style that eventually got called like pale ale because it was paler compared to the porters. Now, that style became extremely popular and still is very popular in England. Like, while a lot of the bitters are actually, in fact, like, you know, could be considered also pale ale in a sense, or at least orig originating from that same uh, movement. Yeah. Uh, but what happened from there, from the pale ale, is that, uh, as we all very well know, England and the United Kingdom had, like, some colonies you know, far, far away in the land. And at a certain point, like, they decided, well, let's try and ship some of those beers overseas. And, and that, you know, making that trip, like, can, can be, you know, problematic, especially when it's taking months, <laughs> oh <my laughs> you know, God, not yeah. just days like it is nowadays. One of the things that they realize is that hops has this incredible preservative <laughs> property along with the, you know, good quality go. of giving flavor uh, to the beer. So they act as preservatives, exactly. Exactly. So what they would do is that uh, before they would ship those pale ales to the Indies, uh, the East Indies, uh, they would add hops uh, to them in order to allow them to survive the trip. And those became known as India uh, pale ales. And we very well know that this is something that has been also imitated, for example, like by Guinness with the four and extra stat where they add extra hops in order to bring Facilitate those preservatives. Facilitate the exporting in long distances. Exactly. Yeah. So that's one of the reasons why those, the style came into play, like in order to survive that trip. But obviously officers and people that, you know, got to love those beers abroad wanted to start drink them also uh, back at home. So that's something that, like, you know, obviously mm -hmm. created that, like, crave. And then mm, that went silent for many years until, like, here in the 80s, like, people here in, in North America started, like, rediscovering and loving that style and bringing it back to life. And uh, this is, you know, one of the prime examples that, from the early 90s that got us to, you know, enjoy this uh, beautiful, like, historical style that, like, has definitely, like, a lot of uh, lovers now uh, nowadays out there. You're such a wise man with your beer beard, your luscious beer beard. <laughs> it's I must say. the knowledge so comes beer from the beard, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have it. It's in the beard. <laughs> it was given to you by the beer gods. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs>